From Hollywood, it's time now for Bob Bailey as... Johnny Dollar. Where have you been, Johnny? I thought we had a date. Oh, Gloria. I'm sorry, baby. I've already had a date. What? Remember the big gorilla at the corner table downstairs in the cantina? The one who kept staring at us? Sure. What about him? Well, he was waiting for me in my room just now. He didn't like the way I parted my hair, I guess, so he changed it with a gun barrel. Johnny, are you all right? Uh, Aside from a lump or two, sure. Sounds to me like you need a little nursing, Johnny. I always do. It's beautiful out on the terrace tonight. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Santo Tomas, Mexico. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Home Office, Northeastern Fidelity and Bonding, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of additional expenses during my investigation of the Alvin Summers and Bezelman case. <laughs> Item four, three dollars American to Eduardo Moreno, M.D., the doctor who dressed the assorted lumps and bruises I'd collected from the strong arm who seemed quite convinced that I should leave town. For a moment, I'd figured he could be the man who was to contact me with information as to the whereabouts of Alvin Summers, the embezzler. But as it turned out, all he wanted to say to me was goodbye, and he said it very convincingly. But Gloria was waiting for me. She definitely seemed to want to get better acquainted. And although I didn't know what her angle was, I figured it might be fun finding out. I left the joint where I was staying and went up to the Playa del Mar, the big expensive hotel overlooking the sea. There was a terrace with some tables and a flamenco singer wailing at the moon. Gloria was at one of the tables. Hi. Johnny, what in the world happened to you when I talked to you over the phone? I'm sorry I'm late, Gloria. You can see by my face I ran into kind of a rough detour. You all right now? Yeah. Johnny, you said it was that man who kept staring at us in the bar where we met? That's the one. Real charming fellow. Muscles, too. What happened? I went to my room to change before coming up here. He was waiting for me, worked me over. The general idea was I should leave Santa Tomas in a hurry. But why? I don't know. Yet. But somewhere along the line, I'm going to make it a point to find out. Cigarette? Thanks. Well, looks like things are picking up a little. How so? I told you I'd found this place pretty dull so far. But now, with you getting beat up and told to get out of town, it's beginning to sound a little more interesting. Well, I could do with more dullness and a few less bruises, believe me. You must be down here on a lot more than just a vacation, Johnny. Oh, I don't know. A lot of people apparently come down here to this town just for a vacation. That's why you told me you came here, remember? There's only one difference. What's that, Gloria? I really am on a vacation, and I don't think you are. Oh? You're not the Santa Tomas type. Why not? Mexico City, maybe. Havana, maybe. But not Santa Tomas. No, I think you came down here to meet somebody. Or to find somebody. Okay. Suppose I did. Who would I be looking for? If you don't know, how would I? Looking for uh, you, maybe? Oh, now that's the nicest thing that's been said to me all day. If you are, it's too bad I didn't know it sooner. Why? It would have made this town a little more bearable. Waiting. Or maybe you've been looking for me. (laughs) Let's not be blunt here. I thought I was being so subtle. You have been looking for me? I must admit I've been looking for someone who's alive in this town. Of course, what I should say is that I've always been looking for you, that I... Okay, okay. I guess that leaves me right where I started from. Hmm? Skip it. So, we're just two happy people on a vacation. Yeah. Okay, Johnny. Okay. Hey, that music... That the flamenco singer you were telling me about? Mm Mm-hmm. Sounds pretty weird, doesn't she? But I like it. You know something? Mm Hmm? Sounds even weirder from down below on the beach. Oh? Like to see for yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd like to. Well, give me a minute. What's the matter? Speaking of people staring at you... That guy again? Where is he? No... It's a little man this time, over at the end of the terrace, see? Oh, that's Benito. Who? The bellboy at my hotel. Excuse me a minute. Be right back. Sure. 
Senor Dollar. Hiya, Benito. Uh, the desk clerk told me you'd come up here. What's on your mind? You told me you'd pay me money if I could get some information for you. That's right. I want to know if anybody's been trying to contact me. You turn up anything? Not about that, senor, but the picture you showed The me. one of Alvin Summers? See, si. I told you I thought I'd seen him here in Santo Tomas. Now I'm sure of it. Good boy. Tonight I talked to a friend of mine. I described Senor Summers to him. He told me he used to work for him as a houseboy. Good. Did he tell you where Summers is now? No, he could not tell me that. Couldn't or wouldn't? I do not know, senor, but he told me where the house is that Summers lived in. Where is it? You could not find it, senor. It's in from the beach in the jungle a little way. I would have to take you there. All right, let's go. Well, not now. I'm uh, supposed to be on duty back at the hotel. I, I must get down there at once before the hotel clerk finds out I'm gone. When do you get off duty? At midnight. I'll come to your room then and take you to Senor Summer's house. Okay, midnight. Good boy, Benino. Uh, <clears throat> a real good boy, senor? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, gracias, senor. Mm. <laughs> but uh, you should not have come here. Now, look, I've already had one guy tell me to leave town tonight. Don't you start. No, I mean you should not have come here to the Playa del Mar. Oh, why not? Because after you pay your check here, senor, you'll not have any more money left to pay me with. <laughs> well, don't worry about it, Benito. I'll bully you through somehow. See you later. Si, sí, senor. Well, hello, Dollar. Oh, no. Carson, E.K. Carson, remember? Sure, the zipper salesman. What brings you up here? Oh, same thing as you, friend, out doing a little stepping. I thought you told me down at the hotel that you figured half the world was just waiting to be zipped up. How can you afford to take the time off? All work and no play, friend. Haven't you heard? Yeah, well, I, uh, I, I have a date. See you later, Carson. I'm still waiting to get you into a cribbage game, friend. Good. That's just what you do. You mean play cribbage? No, I mean keep waiting. When I got back to the table, Gloria was gone. I looked around, no sign of her. This I didn't get, and I didn't like. Why would she pull a disappearing act on me now? Johnny. Then I spotted her, just off the terrace on the path that led to the cabanas on the beach. I went over. She was carrying a scarf and wearing a one-piece bathing suit. The scarf looked bigger. Hi. Well. I thought as long as we were going down to the beach, we might as well go for a swim. Why not? Be right with you. Item five on expense account. Seven dollars for one pair of swimming trunks. Five for the trunks and two bucks to get the hotel shopkeeper out of bed to sell them to me. After all, I figured I ought to stay close to Gloria. That's the way she seemed to want it, and I wanted to know why. She could have some information on the whereabouts of Alvin Summers I could use. Well, she might. Oh, oh, that was fun. Yeah. Come on, there's a place over against the rocks at the foot of the cliff. Okay. What do we do now? Build a fire and roast marshmallows? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't bring any marshmallows. Oh, it's just as well. I'm strictly the hot dog and beer type anyway. Here we are. This is my place, Johnny. I come down here almost every night. Oh, it's nice. I told you there was a moon tonight. Yeah. And the flamenco singer. Music comes right down the rocks to us. Doesn't she ever get tired? Doesn't seem to. What's she singing about? Do you know? Uh-huh. It's about a man in jail in a little town. His sweetheart tosses a rose to him through the bars. It drives him crazy. <laughs> Cheerful. There aren't any walls around you, Johnny. Uh huh? The only trouble is... I don't have a rose. Well, who needs a rose? Oh, Johnny. Darling. Gloria, look, I... You were saying... <sighs> you know something? I forgot what it was. Good. Let's keep it that way, darling. Hold it. So who's thinking of moving? Shh. What is it? They're in the moonlight coming along the beach. Two men? Yeah. Take a good look at the one in front. Johnny, yeah. it's the... I want to work me over in my hotel room tonight. 
It looks like he brought along a stooge with a machete. They're looking for you. Look, get around behind the rock here, then back up the path to the hotel. No, Quiet, Johnny. Quiet, get going. I'm not going to leave will you. Please? please, Johnny, please, don't go out there. Now stay out of sight. They can't see us here in the shadows. Gloria, sooner or later I got a little matter to settle with that big ape, and might as well be soon. No, please, I, I don't want you to get hurt again, Johnny. I'm not going to leave you. you. Okay, okay, come on. Let's shift around to the other side of this rock and keep it quiet. Can you see them? Keep your head down. Maybe it's farther up the beach. Now, watch the water. That was close. Too close. Yeah. Johnny, are you in some kind of trouble? Not yet. You seem pretty concerned about me. I am. You sure that was why you didn't want me to tangle with him? Of course. You don't know the guy, huh? I told you I didn't. Why? Oh, I was just wondering if maybe he was a friend of yours and didn't want me moving in on him. Johnny, you're... You're talking crazy. I've never seen him in my life before today in the bar of your hotel. I told you I didn't want you to get hurt again. I mean it. I... Maybe this will prove it. Well, that's a pretty strong argument. Look, Gloria, I hate to, believe me, but I've got to leave. What? Must be almost midnight. So? So there's something I've got to take care of. Oh, fine. I know. I'm sorry. Pretty strange vacation you're on, Johnny. Yeah. So, my timing was terrible. But I had to meet Benito the bellboy in my hotel room at midnight to find out more about Alvin Summers' whereabouts. I walked Gloria back up to her hotel and headed for mine. It was a couple of minutes after 12 when I got there. I walked into my room and started to reach for the light switch. Then I froze. The moonlight was streaming in through the louvered door to the balcony, and I could see a silhouette against it. Somebody was out on that balcony, crouching against the door. Slowly, carefully, I eased over to it, then suddenly jerked it open. Bonito. And I knew I wasn't going to get any more information about Alvin Summers out of him. After all, you can't do much talking when your throat's been cut. There'll be another exciting episode in our story of the Alvin Summers matter tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, there are some people you just wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley. But sometimes it can't be helped. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs> 